Korean in progress. How cool is that? So, Darren <laughs> Rianne, how are you? Yeah, Not very good, thanks. Yourself? I'm great. Not a bother me, thank you. Getting ready for Christmas. and so, so tell me this. Like, what do you cook for Christmas dinner? Do you cook a turkey or a goose or uh, a duck or a... I, I'm the cook, you know, so if you want something done right, go do it yourself, you know. Uh, I generally cook um, duck for Christmas uh, Christ dinner and like a lamb. Okay, so you better, you, be like be <laughs> you better not tell our BSA mentor, Janine, that you cook duck for Christmas dinner. She won't be happy at all. I know, she won't be. <laughs> we were tempted to, sh to tell her, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, what you've done with your business, but we need to go back in time a little bit. Right. So just tell me about each of you separately. So we start with you, Darren. So when did you first get your love for photography? Where did that come from? So I've, I've loved photography since I was a kid. Um, I used to uh, quite often, um, I used to love uh, aircraft as well. And and as a, a young kid, being a geek and that, you know, me and my mates, we used to go to the airport every year, school holidays, and I'd be there photographing the planes with my camera and and that. So it's, it's sort of evolved from there, you know. Yeah, and then you had kids. And... Yeah, and then I'd see the kids and things like that. But lost touch a little bit with it, and that's when I started work. Um, and then... Uh, about 13 years ago, um, picked it back up again uh, properly and uh, started uh, this place off, you know. Very good. And, and just going back in time, you know, when, when you had that interest in aircraft and photography, like were you literally photographing aircraft or were they just two hobbies you had? They were just, they were just two hobbies I had, you know. And mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be, when I was a, a kid, I wanted to be an aircraft mechanic. So it's just totally different, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes and no, you know, because like they say before the digital camera, you know, as a photographer, you had to be a scientist, you know? So mechanics and photography <laughs> then were probably similar in that they require, require that mindset, right? Of that yeah. mechanical mindset, so. Yeah, it could be, could be. <laughs> yeah. So, so Rianne, do you, are, are you a photographer as well? Or are you just the no? I'm not a photographer. Um, Darren did buy me a camera because I was. I did say I was going to pick up the camera and try. Yeah. But I just didn't gel with it. I'm more the people person. Um, Darren is the push and button, and I am actually do everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, so, so you're the real important person in this business partnership, right? Darren yes. just presses the button and you do everything else. Yeah. I love it. I yes, love it. thank you, Rona, and thank you for noticing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, they say yeah, behind every good man, there's a good woman in there. You know? <laughs> oh, you really well, are. <laughs> well, well, as we talk all the time in BSA, right, because you guys are members of BSA in our hive, so... Um, you know, you can see that because you talk about, you know, your business is a 50-50 partnership. So let's just, not only in business, but also in life, right? So you, you, yes. you're yeah. married to each other. So talk to me about that. Talk to me about the dynamics of running a business together as 50-50 um, partners and yet being married too. Yeah, the first couple of years, I think, was um, when we first opened up, the first two years, I would say, was a bit of a trial and error. I'd quite often leave the studio, just go for a walk around the town. <laughs> And then come back. I've learned now just to nod a lot and just let him think he's, you know, <laughs> right. And then um, query it afterwards. But it is, um, we do work well together. Yeah. I know, I know we have a, you know, we have that nice, um, I don't know, fun bickering kind of thing, don't we? Well, but we, we do, but, but the thing is, we've, we've got to say, we've learned that work is work and home is home. Yeah. So, if we might have a disagreement on something at work, which all, all people do, we go home, it's left in work. We've learned to do that, you know, which uh, which I think that can be quite difficult sometimes with uh, couples working together. Yeah, it's important to make that time out of work as well as, you know, in work together. So we still go to pictures together. We still do, you know, have things like that. So we have things to look forward to as well. So don't, don't get me wrong, though. It can be quite hard, you know, in the aspects of because it's 50-50 partnership, 
it can be hard in the aspect of one will want to do something and the other one holds back and so forth. But I'd see it's uh, it does balance out in the end. Yeah, because I'm the tortoise and Dan's the hare. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You know, that's balance because the middle yeah. is, is, <laughs> is 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 the right track. So, but just just talk to me though. I'm fascinated with this because obviously we're a family business as well, right? So this separation, right, from home and work. So like if you're having breakfast at home or dinner, is work talk banned? No, we do we do, we do talk, talk about, about work, work, but I think we um, we'd more relax at home when yeah. we talk about it. Um, we, we, we tend we love, to have, yeah, we go in the hot tub. We go we? in the hot tub, put a glass of wine, and that's when that's when we talk creativity. Yeah, you know, and that's when the creativity because you're relaxed and you're just talking relaxed. It's not, it's yeah, not sort of uh, so tense, is so it? tense, you know. Yeah. All right. So tell me this. Bring me back in time, right? Because when you started your business, where you was like newborn, sort of the genre you were going to concentrate from the start, or how um, did that evolve? Yeah, not not from the start. The um, we we were a general photography yeah. when we first started. We, I only worked part time here. Yeah. We did we did decide from the word go. We're doing studio photography only because we. We do find we did think to ourselves back then. Well, if we went down the wedding route during wedding season, mm. the uh, studio is going to suffer because on the busiest days for a wedding are usually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The busiest days in the studio were Saturday, are usually Sunday. Sun yeah. Saturday, Sundays when when uh, parents were off. So yeah, we were a general studio, but it was only studio based. Um, but yeah, it was about five years in, wasn't it, when we realised and we thought, oh, something wasn't quite gelling. Um, I went very ill for um, six months. Um, Darren nearly lost me twice in the matter of six months. And then... Found her again, though. <laughs> <no. laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I think we really needed to... Uh, we were struggling, weren't yeah. we? We were very, we, you know... We were on the brink of literally closing our doors and giving up because I was spending so much time down the hospital by the inside and that we we sort of uh, let let this place lapse a bit so when we came came right. back and um, we had to, we had decisions to make either we're going to push forward or give it all up you know yeah so touch, touch wood we've done the right choice you know we've pushed forward you know yeah <laughs> yeah so we all right it, so. Hmm. so so I'm, I'm delighted Rianne you've made a full recovery but was that was that did that help in you guys coming to your decision to I think to, so yeah because it's it sort of like give us a wake-up call really didn't it um so we enrolled on a course um with Ellie Cassidy um we sort of like really went full-blown and then we came home and we went right this is what we want to do um, so literally within a matter of a year, I think, after being with Ellie, we streamlined yeah. the studio. Um, so we are dedicated now to newborns. We do maybe, I don't know, five families yeah. a year. We, it's not, you know, but it's yeah. usually return clients. We tend to actually, we are, we're known for newborn photographers. That is what we're known for. But I think one of the, one of the main reasons we did pursue and go forward and not give up is um we did uh, we did have a good chat with uh, Charlie Kaufman and he persuaded us to do the early casting course and if it wasn't for them too we probably uh, would have given up you know yeah so they did help so, us a lot they did help us a lot to refocus and mm -hmm. um yeah push us give us the push we yeah. did really so yes so no, often I see with photographers, right, they're, they're afraid nearly to concentrate on one niche or one niche, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. Um, so how did you feel about that? Like, I know you were encouraged by Ellie and Charlie to do it. Quite but... frightening at the time, wasn't it? I think Darren was more for it, as we say, he is the hair, so he does run. Um, I was very like, oh, my God, I don't know if we can do this. You know, it's, we're not going to have enough call. Um, are we going to get business through the door? What what we found is when we were a general photographer, the um it was right, 
how do we advertise? Mm. This one, do we advertise for generations? Do we advertise for families? Do we advertise for pets? Do we advertise for newborns? And it was just a constant cycle of... of yeah, and there was no constant flow, was there? There was your yeah. ups and your downs, because Christmas time would be absolutely crazy. Then the other times, then, you know, you'd have your flow like this. Whereas um, within the first couple of years of doing newborn, newborn solely newborn, we realised there's more or less a constant flow. Yeah. And so, we've got one message now going to clients. We know every single month what we're aiming to get, what we're aiming for, you know, so there's none of this trace, trying to get everyone. Yeah. Because you know, the, the problem is you can track a lot of, uh, a lot of mud on the wall. Some of it will stick, you know, and that's what we were sort of doing. Yeah. So, Rianne, um, I think what you've said to me is that the beauty about newborn is people are making babies all year round, right? So there's a constant flow of potential yes, clients. Yes. <laughs> so, so, but tell me, um, you mentioned also that there was this fear of, you know, well, what if there's not enough mm. newborn clients, right, that will travel to your studio? You know, did you, was there a scientific approach to that or was it, no, let's just do this. Let's just make it happen and become think, known as the newborns. Within yeah, I think we just sort of like made the decision. Um, not once that I think somebody would travel two hours to come to us, you know, or even further sometimes. Um, you know, I always just think, no, gosh, who's going to do that? You know what I mean? But our average clients now are far from our way. That You know what I mean? We get the odd ones from local um but i would say majority of clients are more or less 45 minutes to an hour and a half away um so yeah the area is it, you know there is enough call for a newborn photographers so yeah it it's worked for us isn't it it has yeah. worked for us so so darren i know you're the hair right but did you um you know a lot of photographers i talk to right they find it difficult to make this decision to specialize right and um, in that, if they specialize, will there be enough clients? And is that fear? But have you found, Darren, that by specializing, it allowed you to deliver a level of service and experience to your newborn clients that would have been difficult if you were trying to do multi, multi, multi genres? We, I, uh, I have, uh, to be honest, um, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, so it's, it's quite a um, constant sort of monotonous uh, thing um job because you're doing the same thing all the time where i know a lot of uh, photographers like the creativity part of having different uh, genres of, of photography because it keeps them uh, keeps them stimulated now what we what i tend to do is concentrate on the newborns for my uh, clients clients for the, uh, for the every day for the bread and butter if you want the um and then we i then photograph them um, like whiskey bottles or do some other other things to to bring out the creativity which uh, which doesn't involve getting clients and doesn't involve our uh, bread and butter you know but it has helped us because the studio now is equipped ready for newborns We've got a changing area. We've got, you know, um, the props. Mm. Everything is just surrounded for newborns. So every time we go shopping, I'm constantly doing this. Oh, this, yeah, baby, we're fitting that. Baby, we're fitting this. So um, we haven't got anything else now, really, yeah. have we? So, so yeah, it is. it has made it easier. We don't have to worry about so many genres. So... Mm. So if I'm a photographer, right, and I'm worried about, you know, I'm listening to Ronan and others that are saying, you know, niche down, you know, don't, don't, um, don't be trying to be everything to everyone because you end up like a headless chicken, please and nobody and broke, yeah. right? And um, so what would you say to a photographer who's, who's, you know, in that dilemma to make this decision? What, what, what would do you it. say? Just do it. You know, it's a, uh... It's the best thing we we done is concentrated on on one genre. As the as the saying goes, you can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You know, so yes. we want to master our craft. You know, and and Darren, you know, you talked about you know to because you you're a creative, right? So you want to test your creativity and your 
photographing whiskey bottles and all that sort of stuff. Is that the work you will enter in print competition versus um, the work you do for clients or do you we, enter both? We No, we enter both. Um, all of our newborn photos that we have entered into any competition have come from real clients. Um, and I think that does work does work uh, quite well because you can get clients in and just photograph them purely for shows and that but I think showing the real clients work does help sort of um show the clients that what you were giving them you know? so Darren tell me this right it's something I've always questioned because I'm not a photographer right as my daughter say I can't even take a selfie right and um, <laughs> but tell me this um do you think there should be in print competition there should be a different category for work that's created for creativity versus work that's created to be sold should they be distinguished in any way i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so because at the end of the day i think it's, it's all going down the journey um and the better photographs you take in competition that's just going to better your yes yeah, improve your skills impre- improve your skills for your clients and at the end of the day that's what we want is is clients coming in and the the better we serve our clients the better it is you know yeah it's a (laughs) win-win so guys if you have any questions those of you who are watching us either on facebook or on zoom you know just put them into the comments and and we make sure to ask them rianne and tell me this i'm going to start backwards right so i'm going to start with the experience after the client has been booked, right? And then we talked to Darren about the marketing side of things. Okay. <laughs> but the client, when, when they're booked, just talk to me about the process. So um, obviously newborn, right? I'm I'm making a booking maybe while I'm pregnant and I don't know exactly what day it is going to be because I can't predict the day I'm going to be um, pregnant and all that. How do you manage your calendar, your diary for that scenario? Um, I book them in and they do date and they only confirm it once baby's arrived. So um, I always tell them, don't worry, baby's five days earlier, 10 days late, it doesn't matter. Um, as we only take on a number of newborns per month, so my diary can remain flexible for them. Um, then um, once they've, you know, so like once they've booked in, then they can book in months in advance. So you don't want to just book them in and then just leave them till like the baby's born because they haven't had no contact with you. So you've got to try and sort of like nurture them along the way as well. So um, I send emails out. Um, I also send like a hospital bag list, um, you know, just silly things just to sort of like keep them um, involved with us. Um, and then a month before they do, I give them a ring. Um, in the meantime, I would have sent them an email saying how to get to know you and things like that. Well, the month before then, I actually really talk with them about the session, what colours would they like? What props are they interested in? Um, what kind of photos they're after? You know, um, do they want skin to skin photos like the ones behind us on the wall? Do they want clothed? So it really then makes the session a bit more personal to our clients. And then they feel that much more um, invested in us as well, because we've given them that time to actually, you know. So, so Rihanna, is that done? that choice right with clothes or skin to skin as you described it is that done with on zoom with pictures or do they come to visit you or what's that process um i can i i do it over the phone most of the time but i have done a few via zoom because obviously the world's going a bit it's opening up a bit more Mm. with zoom these days um but yeah i tend to sort of like um send them photos and you know so and then they send me some back so that i get a feel of what they really after um but yeah if they want to come here in person that's not a problem um you know what i mean i i'd rather make more time for the clients um so they know we're invested in them so then they're willing to come here and invest in us it's the way the world goes around so rianne and um, back to the to the booking and you know when they actually come into the studio for the experience like I, I can only imagine i've we've had four children right and i've had the easy job as the man i'm told <laughs> That um, you know, how do they even remember to that they booked a session with you when the baby arrives? Because there's a window, isn't there? There's a window of opportunity. Yeah, there's a small window. So we go up to about 21 days. Um, but what we tend to what I say is within 48 hours, let me know you've had your little one. 
But round about they do did, I do text them once a week as well, because I know there's so much going on, I'm the back of their mind. So I do text them once a week just to sort of like keep up to date with them. Um, and then, you know, so once they've told me then, I then phone them then about two or three days later, give them, you know, let them get on their feet, <laughs> they to come back to normal. Um, and then I book them in then to the dates accordingly. So, um, so yeah, it's all done once the baby's arrived. So they don't have to stress about, oh my gosh, I forgot about the photographer three weeks later. It's, it's too late. So, yeah. So, so talk to me about the Rianne again. Talk to me. I come to you, Darren. I'm not forgetting you, right? I'm you. <laughs> um, so, Rianne, talk to me about the process. So, when when mum turns up, does she turn up with her partner, or is it just mum yeah, and the yeah, baby, they usually, or um, how does that all work? They because it's within the first three weeks. Usually, dad is here as well because dad hasn't gone back to work. Um, and I will try and work around shifts with dad as well because I think it's important for dad to be here and be part of it all as well. Um, then um, they come into the studio. We have everything set up ready in the studio for them. Um, they come in, we sit down, we have a nice little cup of tea. Um, I offer chocolates, you know what I mean? It's just sort of like really making them feel welcome. And um, it's a nice, warm, comforting, relaxing environment for them to come in. So um, because there's two of us, when we go into the studio then, um, baby has a feed, comes to me, Darren takes the photos, I pose baby, so then mum and dad can just sit back and relax and enjoy the whole experience. Fall asleep, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to ask that. How often would mum and our dad fall asleep? Usually it's the dads that tend yeah. to fall asleep. Mums tend to sit, stay awake. <laughs> but dads, we have had a few dads yeah. fall asleep. Yeah, haven't it's we? Especially when they go out the night before with baby's head and yeah. that, you know? <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, it's because there's two of us, it makes it, you know, um, the experience is much, much more, I think, because you haven't got to have dad as a spotter or mom as a spotter. They can just sit back and relax and enjoy the whole experience. So um, a lot of people are liking that, that they can just come in and relax because it's there at the second hour to talk to themselves. It's like, wow, what's this? <laughs> so like, we got a fully stocked fridge with uh, Coke and Diet Coke, orange juice, um, they can have this other tea and coffee. Crisps and you know, chocolates we, and biscuits. We, we and... are trying to get a better coffee machine, but we won't go there now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, we won't talk about the coffee machine because the, the, BS, the BSA and our Hive members know what that's all about, but we won't do that here. <laughs> So, but tell me this, do you think the temperature of the room has anything to do with oh, that gosh. not enough to sleep, you know? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, the temperature of our studio is around about 24, 24 degrees. Yeah. 24. What's that um, in Fahrenheit now? It's about 48 plus, or it's about 24 degrees. What's that? It's about 80 something, is it, in Fahrenheit for American uh, fans? Uh, You're asking something My maths is all that good, right? <laughs> <laughs> but See yeah, it, it's a nice temperature for the baby. Um, I always tell parents, I always inform them, look, it is warm in the studio, so dress somebody, even though it's outside, it's freezing. <laughs> in our studio, it's not, so... Um, I always, I always inform them and I always tell them to tell the partner as well because they always forget to tell the partner and the partner comes in a big jump bird and what have you. Um, but then every area where we put in baby, we've got a hot water bottle. So it keeps that area nice and warm. We lift the hot water and put the baby down. So then when baby's naked, they don't feel as if they're actually exposed because they've got that comfiness. Um, so that's, and we always got white noise playing yeah. every So it's a, you know, because, we swear by white noise. It's uh, it really circles the babies. So, Monica, thank you so much. She says it's seventy five degrees Fahrenheit. Is, is, is <laughs> thank you. So not quite the eighty, but close, close. Yeah, roundabout. It's not far off. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, and good to see you, Monica, all the way from Switzerland. You're very welcome. Um, if you have any questions, guys, if any of you have any questions, just put it in the chat, and we will ask the questions. Um, oh, Monica's getting very precise now. 75.2. <laughs> All right. So, so um, okay, so the session is done, right? Um, and often, Darren, I see, you know, that newborn sessions can last four, five, six hours, right? But you, you, you've mastered this, that they don't take that long. Talk to us about that. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a lot to do with the way our studio is set up. And um, we got 
everything is set up beforehand. Um, we got blanket work set up. We got two backgrounds set up with props ready there that we've had discussed with the man beforehand. And because there's two of us, there's um, there's not that transition from photographer to mom all the time and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and we've worked together for so long. We've we've learned now each other sort of um, what we've got to do. I just got to say to Rihanna, oh, the finger's not right in the front, and Rihanna knows exactly how to uh, address it and change it. Um, so our our sessions now tend to be about an hour and a half. Um, Maximum. We we have had our quickest sort of newborn session has been, and it's a full newborn session, has been 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, when we first started off. We were four hours. We, were, we were about three, four hours <laughs> long. It did take us a long time to, to streamline our process, you know. But we, we feel now that parents like the shorter session. And I don't... Like, I don't believe in um, mini sessions. I know photographers do give mini sessions for newborns and that. But I, we can give a our photographer, um, our mums and dads, the same experience on a full session in the same time as what a mini session would, uh, mm. would take. So what you're saying is your, your clients appreciate because you're so organised and the experience you can give you give the ultimate experience in an hour and a half. Sometimes you can get it to 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. There's no less value in that because mom and dad appreciate that they don't have to spend four hours when they get tired, except yeah. for the dads that fall asleep, right? They want to stay there for longer. <laughs> they want longer, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it does. It Parents seem to appreciate the time. Um, even if it's just an hour, just themselves, it's nice. Um, you know, whereas if the session is more than like three, if it's like three to four hours, oh, it's a long time for mum, mm. you know, especially if you have C section, she's getting uncomfortable, um, her painkillers are wearing off. You want you don't want it to be that long for them. It's mm. quite a, you know, so it's nice actually that it is, you know, I think they very much like the fact of it's done within an hour and a half and they don't have to worry, it's just done, it's it's gone, it's dusted, it's you know, and it's it's smooth, isn't it? Mm. And we don't rush anything. You know what I mean? If baby needs feeding, we'll feed baby. If we, you know, we just we, we block out in our diary. We we basically block out four and a half hours in our diary for the client. Mm. So if the on baby the off chance, if yeah. on the off chance the baby is a hungrier baby and wants more feeding or whatever, we have got that time there. We're not stressed about mm. any anyone else. You know, coming in and sort of going. All right, so we've got to kick you out now because now we're at clock watching. Yeah. It, it's I don't think any clients really appreciate would appreciate that, you know. No, so that's why we always allow more than adequate time. It's just obviously, um, but we give every client the same. You know what I mean? So if 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 baby's a bit off, baby's a bit off. It's not a problem. But average, we had about hour and a half. Yeah, and I think. I think that's a really clever thing to do, you know, because no matter how good we are, right, if we are clock watching and we have someone else coming, you know, we're not going to be relaxed. And it's, not, it's a time that can be stressful for new parents, right? Even if it's their second, third or fourth child, it, it's a stressful time. Yeah, yeah. I always I always say to them, look, you don't have to worry about um, about the time come in, you relax, um, you know, I've got nappies here, I've got wet wipes here, I've got everything here that your baby's going to need, so don't stress about anything, um, you know what I mean, I've got spare blankets, because the other day we had a lady come in and she forgot to bring a blanket, and it was pouring down by the time she got home, so I was like, just take the blanket, it's fine, you know, it's five quid from home bargains, it's not a problem, um, you know, so it just helps with that experience as well, that you've got to educate your parents that, it's not a problem, you know what I mean? If I've got a baby and it's a little bit twitchy and like the one that came in this, today, she was stressing on the phone to me two days ago and she was like, oh my God, he doesn't go down, he doesn't do anything, he, he won't let me go. And he came in and he was a little angel for us. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, what's your, you know, and I'm like, you know what it is? I said, I'm calm with baby. Whereas when you're a parent, you, you tend to be like, oh my God, just go to sleep. You know, whereas when you're, with us, I think, because I'm just so calm yeah. with the baby. The baby just relaxes with you because they read you, don't they? So, 
We, we no. quite often have uh, parents uh, turn around and say, oh, can you come at three o'clock in the morning, you know? And I've tried pimping her out, but she no. won't go, you know? No, I'm like, no, it's fine. I do my job here. I love my cuddles and I'll give them back. So. <laughs> and you know the way they say in boudoir and family portraiture, um, you know, that the, the, the client borrows your confidence. I think with you guys, they borrow your relaxation, right? And it allows yeah. them just to chill out, you know, and to yeah. enjoy it. And that's it's like they, they pick up tips as well. It's like the white noise and things like that. Um, you know, many parents come back from me and go, oh, my God, I use that white noise. It was amazing. You know, And it's just, you know what I mean? It's it's for them to actually realize that, um, you know, we, we're human as well. So, you know what I mean? We've been there. We've done it. And, yeah. uh, you know, we know how you feel. We know how hard it is to leave the house the first couple of out, you know, within the first week. So try and take some stress away from them and they do appreciate it. So uh, another question for Rianne, and then I'm going to go to Darren. Rianne, so do you play music when your clients arrive and who picks the music? Does your client pick it or do you pick it or is there no music? Um, I tend to have like a playlist. So it's basically quite mellow music. Um, I, you know, a bit, um, bit of easy listening music. So, you know, um, it's, it's quite hard but you know yeah, what I mean but yeah easy yeah. listening music so they they can sing along if they want to but it's just easy listening music. and it's in the background it's not overpowering at all you know it's just there in the background so um I haven't actually asked my clients if they if they've got something they want to play because I think they just seem happy with the music as on, yeah. don't they so yeah so Darren is are you tethering the images onto a tv or somewhere else that the client sees when you're doing the <laughs> session or do you not do that no, we don't tether the uh, newborn sessions um, because because there's um, a lot of uh, editing to do with them. We uh, take care of dry skin and things like that. Um, and babies are quite o- quite often uh, like to have one eye open watching you. <laughs> so you've got to tease it, tease them to close that uh, that eye and that. We we t- what we tend to do is I shoot on. Um, Two cards, I shoot one raw, one JPEG, because JPEG's a lot easier to um, download after the session. And then what we have done now is we have, um, in the last couple of months, we've started doing instant viewings with our clients. So straight after the session, I'm in the uh, in the office and I track the JPEGs on, I downlist from the JPEGs, whilst we are uh, guess the clients can be in the viewing room and gives... Um, gets some more tea and coffee, mm. you know, and uh, sort of entertains them. And then we uh, we down list and show our clients uh, the photo straight away. Basically, within uh, within fifteen minutes of the session, we always say to them they're not edited photos, but if you you know whatever you purchase will be edited, so the dry skin will be gone, um, and things like that. You know what I mean? So we do explain that beforehand, and we explain the edited like the like the photos see around the studio, yeah. so they're happy with that. As well, you know, and a lot of people like it because it's done in one day. It's it's easy. Okay, so I really want to talk to this for a second, right? So, first of all, tell me when this changed. Um, probably about two months ago, is it? About two, yeah. three months ago. About, about two and a half months ago. Okay, so yeah. it's relatively new, right? Yes. yes. So, so let's just say, let me just explain to people what you're doing, right? So, um, after the photographic session. Um, the client is doing the, the, the buying session or the design consultation or whatever you want to call it, the viewing session, on the same day, 15, 20 minutes after the photographic session ends. Yes. Yeah. And you start, to, like a lot of people would say, you can't do that for newborn, right? So you're, you're saying that your clients seem to appreciate not having to come back again, right? Yeah, because usually dad's going back to work. Yeah. So that's a major one. We 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 did for years edit everything yeah. for the client before the client seen it, seen it because that's our, that was our insecurity and our security blanket on showing parents what what they're gonna get basically. But in in hindsight, it is a little bit silly in in some respects because you're doing work before you've even even getting paid for it as such do you know what i mean so this is uh, through, so now, uh, yeah. through bsa a lot of the um bsa members have have advised 
do instant view and do instant viewings. And don't and fully it, edit your photos. <laughs> and it's taken us, it's taken us a good while to actually before we actually started it, but we we thought we'd give it a try and it seems yeah, to be working. Yeah, we, you know what I mean? We did an instant viewing today. It was it was it works. Okay, so it's two and a half months old, the instant viewing, right? So talk to me about average sale pre instant viewing, post instant instant viewing. No difference. No change. No change. Can you say that again. There's no difference at all. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So the only difference is we make more profit. And that's what I we love. Don't have, we don't have to edit as many photos. Yeah. And I'm just going to talk about profit now, Darren. And um, so, Darren, talk to me about the financial system you use to run your business. We use profit first. It's a, it's a system that, that's actually that has actually changed our business and has changed changed us, really. Yeah, it has. It's changed you know? our life. It's, it's changed uh, our life. Pre, Pre-profit first. Rian wasn't getting paid. She was volunteering to work. <laughs> and I was just taking money out of the business as and when really we needed it as such, you know. Um, we never really had a wage, none no. of us, did we? Since, really? since profit first. Every month we're getting a wage. Um, every every three months, uh, as long as everything goes right, we get in the dividend pay. Um, and we'd actually, our we actually started to relax now uh, with with what we're doing. You know, we don't but, feel we're chasing um chasing ourselves anymore, no, do we? Because no. we're actually having a wage now. So, and and the proper first, it, it sort of. The system, it, 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 it's based around human behavior, right? So it gets us to do things. Yeah. So yes, to set it up takes a little bit of work to get those bank yeah. accounts set up. But it's so easy to operate, isn't it? Yes. Well, once, you get, once you get into it, it is very easy to operate, mm-hmm. you know? Don't get me wrong, it scares the accountants. <laughs> <laughs> but our accountant now, she, she actually loves the system and she sort of... Uh, She's always telling her her other clients to use it, you know. Yeah, she loved she she just she said I love doing Darren's books because it's all in order. I know exactly where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> so. so so and Darren, you love paying your tax bill, right? Oh yes. <laughs> I love paying my tax bill. If I pay tax, I may I've made profit. But the good thing is the money is there to pay for the tax. Yeah. I think that is a massive thing because every year we used to be, oh my gosh, taxes do. And we just never, yeah. you know what I mean? And, it was well, hard going, wasn't it? Several years ago, we had a, a very good year and we had our tax bill and we went, where are we going to get this money from? Mm. So adopting this uh, profit first system, it just keeps building, keeps building. And I know it's, uh, it's there. I know it's there, you know? Yeah. We haven't got to worry about it because we know it's in the account ready. Excellent. And and guys, if you're not doing Profit First, I highly recommend it as a, a Profit First professional. It is, and as somebody who started to train as an accountant and has a daughter who's a qualified accountant, it is the thing. It is the financial system to run your business. So you've got your money in your tax account when you need to pay it. You've got a profit distribution every quarter once you make your profit. 50% of that stays in the business. 50% you reward yourself as the business owner. And of course, you've paid yourself. But Darren Rian, tell me, I th- you mentioned earlier a hot tub, right? Yeah. Was, was, was that as a result of a profit distribution by any chance? Yeah, we bought yeah. that last year um, without dividends, didn't we? Yeah. And we've, this, got, we've also done decking without we've, dividends yeah, in the back garden. We've decked out the back garden. We've done the garden out this year. Um, we're planning next year to put a, uh, a wooden gazebo over it as well. So yeah, we're planning now what we're doing with profits. You know, yeah, it's a nice it's a nice thought in your head that you've got this coming. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or, can I requote what you just said? Yeah, we're planning how we're going to spend our profits on us. <laughs> how, you know. How cool is that? I love it. I love it. Okay, so Rianne, um back to you for a second so just talk to us about um the products your clients invest in so i can see wall art in the back uh, on, on the wall Got the folio um, box here yeah 
folio box and folio art frames and and, and and thank you so much for your business at 3xm we really appreciate it but you you switched to um i think our 10 by 8 window folio box right um, and you decided when you brought out the three colors you started with the walnut and then you added the the, the black and and, and the the brush white, white. Yeah. yeah so just talk to me you know is there which one does the, do the clients go for when you offer all three? To be honest with you, it's it's a mixture. Do you know mm. what I mean? Um, I think because like because obviously because we offer the frames as well, so they tend to sort of like go if they go for a black box, then they're gonna go for a black frame. Um, so it is a mixture mm. of what people actually want, and I think they like that that they've got the choice of the three because everyone's house is different. Do you know what I mean? The walnut would suit my house, whereas the white one would suit my mother's. You know, it's completely different um, deco. So um, I think people are liking the choice that they've got the three choices. And I think... Um, and they love the fact that it's a window. There's yeah. got a window in the front. Yeah, they because yeah. um, like our clients now who came in a couple of years ago and they purchased a box of us then, obviously it didn't have the window. But now they're coming back with their second child. They're like, oh no, I'll actually like the window. I don't want to match the other one now. I'll go for this. So, um, so yeah, it's, they are really one of our most popular products. Yeah. So, so I think what you're telling me is that offering the three colors that, um, they're choosing the color based on house decor. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah. To me, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, 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 um, Michelle asks a question around how do you deal with clients who say only want 10 matted prints in a box? Do you offer that or how do you approach that? Yeah, we offer the 10 matted prints um, in the box. Um, if they want to then, um, what happens sometimes then is they come back for a first birthday um, and then they add prints to the box then. So there's always an option to actually um, do that. But if, you know, nine out of 10 times, we tend to sell the full box yeah. to me, but we do have the odd ones who just want the 10. You know what I mean? But then they want them all in the USB. So I sort of like work our um, profit up that way. Then yeah. I sort of like add a bonus on. <clears throat> yeah. Our, and yeah, our full box is uh, 20 images. Um, we have we have occasionally sold a 30 image box, but we but because it's not on display, I mean, and that's it's not something that our clients tend to sort of go for because we tend to show them roughly about 25 photos. So a 30, a 30 box is too big for, for what we our do. clientele, you know? Yeah. So, so, so Rianne, before we get into the pricing structure and the prices structure, right, um, there's a question asked to, who was it? It was Michelle as well. So she's asked about, you know, the folio art frame that's behind you there over your left shoulder. Um, that, that, that's, that's, that's a box. Oh, that's a box, is it? Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so the folio art frame, see, they look so similar. I'm, yeah, okay. So, so the folio art frame that, that you, do you sell the folio art frame, first of all? Yeah. We have got yes. them here, yes. Okay. okay. So do your clients ever ask, why does the base of the folio art frame, does it kind of come to match the box color? Or have you ever had that? No, never had that question, yeah, to be no. honest with you. <clears throat> no. We haven't, we haven't had anyone ask that. Okay. I do like the fact that you can change photos in them and you can uh, use them either way. Okay. And, but they, yeah, it's something we've never yeah, been asked. Yeah, something we've never been asked. Yeah. Um, okay. tend, tend to sell them more with the diamond box rather than okay. the um, the folio ones because obviously you haven't got the photo to display there. So then the those tend to go with that. Okay, so the, 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 the folio art frame that goes with the diamond boxes. So how many images would be in the diamond box then? Um, we've got the five. And, yeah. and the 10 we're introducing the 10 now after christmas and our new price guide and and then what we're going to do is the wooden box then and uh, the, the wooden uh, window boxes are only going to be for sale with the 20 images then. yeah they're with going to 20. become a okay. premium ones yeah so you're so you're going to use the folio box then as an upsell for them to invest in more images with you and go from yeah. 10 yes. up to, all right okay so so let me just talk about there's so many different pricing approaches right so are you selling a la carte are you doing packages are you doing a combination of both or what what how we do, you do packages at the moment yeah, um, we do a combination of both yeah uh, we do yeah. do a combination of both but our <laughs> collections are the ones that tend to be the most popular um option because we've done it that um 
Our largest collection um, includes three photos behind us and the large folio box. Um, now, I never thought we'd actually sell that, <laughs> like two grand, but we have sold five in the last um, four months. Yeah. So we need to up our prices a little bit because obviously it just goes to show people are willing to pay it. So, yeah. Right. And, and Kelly asks, so she's having difficulty selling both folio boxes and wall art. So can you just talk us through, Rianne, the process? Do you start by selling the wall art first and then the folio box? Or do you start with the folio box and then go to wall art? Or what's um, your I always, I always mention the phone. I always mention wall art on the phone. And I mentioned that once people have purchased wall art, then they tend to sort of like go for a folio box. Um, so I, I mention things like this on the phone. Um, if they ask prices, I only say what they start from. Because sometimes if you mention prices on the phone, sometimes it can frighten clients because they haven't read, they don't really know you yet. They don't know your experience. They don't know anything. Um, so I always say prices start from when they come in for they set when they come in for the viewing session, then um I tend to go through then the um the investment guide. And because our collections then they um we say then right well our collections are designed to give you to give you what you want so they include a wall art they include a folio box and the digitals and then obviously they go down in price and down in size as they go along so um nine out of ten people will purchase a collection our price guide is designed to go from the highest price to the lowest price so the first price they see is the highest price. And if that scares them, they know they can always go down. Now, I'd, I'd see uh, we've got to increase our price because it hasn't scared enough people yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it always goes down. We start with collections, then go into individuals, and then the loose prints eh, on yeah. their own. All right. And, and, and talk to me then about... Um, if, if we talk about the pricing again, I, I was there another question there I need to see. I know I think we got all the questions on pricing. So um, talk to me then about the, the the sales process. So the client then, when they do you do a slideshow to music and then you show the images? Yeah, we do a slideshow then... to music. And then um, I go through each photo individually then saying about, you know, I pick out little things. Oh my God, look at, his, look at his face in this one. You know, it looks so cute. And look at the little rolls when I put them on, you know, so they, they're on the tummy with a tushy in the air. Um, so, you know, they pick out little things then. So then by the time they've got to the end, they love them all. <laughs> so, um, so then when it comes to then downlisting, they're like, oh, I don't know if I want to downlist. You know what I mean? And that's when then they sort of like go, okay, so what can we, what way can we have them all? Um, and like we used to do things like um, like we still sell the USB on its own. Very rarely we sell it now. When they say to me now, oh, I want them all on a USB. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what? You can have them all on the USB for this, you know, and you get this little box or the stick that goes in the drawer. Or you could have this lovely box that comes with everything. And, you know, and they go, oh, my God, that's just a no brainer. Mm. So, you know, they, they, they fall in love with that box. So, you know, and then. And like I always say to them, the print quality of somebody else, I can't guarantee that. So I know what, what you're getting when you get the box. I know you're getting our quality, you know. Um, and once they hold the box and they feel the quality of the box as well, it makes a massive difference for them. Yeah, we got the the 14 inch box, yeah, the uh, folio box, and that's what we give them. And it, it shocks them, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the weight, the weight of it, you know. You've, you've even had um, oh, wood, um, a lot of people that deal with wood, yeah, and they have a look at it, they look at the <laughs> joints, and and they know it's good quality uh, yeah. stuff, you know. And, and, and Rianne, um, do you offer an album as well? Choice? We don't offer albums at the moment. Um, it is something we are looking into, um, but... It's, I, I'm finding it hard tonight to, I, do, I like the print boxes, I just like them. We, we, we are, we are going to bring albums in, I just find it hard to design it the way mm. we like it, you know. Or the and, way I like it, actually. Well, the way Leah likes it. 
Yeah. But Leon's got the woman's touch and that's what, uh, yeah. that's what you need. I'm, you know? in the, I'm in the sales room. So if I don't like a product, I'm not going to end up selling it because you've got to love your products to sell them. And are, are the, is the consumer surprised when they see a folio box? Like, do they react? I've never seen this before. And yeah, yeah, they do. They, they actually, and they're like, oh my God, it's got, oh, and I can change the window. And oh, they love it. You know what I mean? It's, it's a nice feeling because, you know, and like I hand them the big box and then obviously then, so then they go, oh God, this, no, these are a bit too big for me. Okay, then we'll go for this one then. You know what I mean? Because that's, you know, so it's like, they oh, okay, I'll go for that one. So they they tend to go more for that one then than the diamond box because they look at the diamond box and go to that one and they go, oh, whoa, no, there's a big difference here, you know? <laughs> so, so, so you're using price anchoring, product anchoring, and the middle piece. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. This is what most people buy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. All right, so yeah. talk to us then. Kelly is asking a question I was going to ask too. So in, in the viewing session, um, or sales session or design consultation, depending on what language you use. Um, how many images are you showing to the client? Around 25 to 30 photos. We do get the odd ones a little bit more, but it's usually 25 mm. to 30 photos. Okay, okay. All right, so before we start talking about, about marketing, Monica's asked me, Ronan, does 3XM offer a print service? So, Darren, do you want to spill the beans? <laughs> well, it's coming out today. <laughs> yeah, um, I've been, I've been one of the uh, beta testers or beta testers, whatever, wherever, wherever However you put it, yeah. Um, and we've been sorting out a few problems, but uh, I think, the, I think yeah, there was teething, yeah, teething there was teething problems, teething problems but, at the beginning, but that's normal. But that's normal. But that's why you're, that's why you do the uh, beta testing. I don't know it's, uh, but the quality of the uh, prints is very nice. It's it, they're actually really good quality. And and the best thing about it, it makes it so much easier. Oh. That we get a box, we we track it, we track the yeah, photos, and they go out. I just I got it on goody. I got to just download the USB, in it yeah. goes, and it's done. It's so much easier. I haven't got to worry about printing and cutting and yeah. doing all the other you know stuff. It's just because we we do in house printing. Mm. But to print 20 photos, cut them, mount them, put them in the box, it's time consuming. Yeah. And time is money at the end of the day. So it's trying to streamline everything to try and get, get good quality service, but streamline it to Yeah, and it's it, and make, it works. It, work, it, it works, it's fantastic, and they are good quality. So you know what I mean? When when you when you ask somebody else to print for you, you are you're always worried about mm. the quality you're gonna have because you're so used to doing your own. Yeah. So, but we're really happy with yeah. the quality we have in off you. So yes, yeah, fantastic. So, so Monica, to answer your question, you just had it there. So the launch date is is just early January. So you, you get some correspondence very, very soon. So Darren, along with some other photographers, have been beta testing this for a number of months because we wanted to make sure before we launch a fully that. Because there's always, when you launch something new, there's little teething problems, if we call them that. No pun intended, because we're talking about newborn photography. <laughs> um, but, um, but we, you know, we've ironed all those out now. So um, so, so, so we're good to go. Uh, we're going to call it fully loaded, I think, or something like that. So you can either have your folio box with mats, naked or fully loaded. <laughs> um, yeah. Naked is a current thing. Yeah. Fully loaded if it's full. So um, let, I want to talk about marketing, though. Right, because um, Darren, um, I see a lot of photography businesses, right, um, who have, you know, even mastered their sales process, mastered their experience, mastered their pricing, mastered their financial system, and still they don't have enough clients, right? Just talk to me about how you market your business, the different ways you do. And I know you use multiple different ways to do that. Yeah. But just talk to us about a couple of those and, 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 and what you do and how you do it. Well, we, we, do, we do a lot of marketing um, in various ways. A um, couple of years ago, we were, we were mainly sort of doing um, Facebook marketing by boosting adverts and... Um, we didn't we didn't local magazines and things like that. Mm. And obviously we do Google ads and and all that. But we've um 
we've now streamlined our sort of process to our main sort of thing is funnel marketing now. Um, and we get in the correct, the correct sort of clients to come in through funnel marketing systems to sort of work out, we sort of work out who we want as our clients and we get them through that through the funnel marketing system, you know. So what's but, what's a what's a funnel marketing system? Is that something I fill my car with <laughs> diesel or petrol with? Or yeah. What's that? It's it's very well, and it, it's quite simple. It's, you know, you see all these things, um, funnel marketing, do this, do that, and it was all sort of very confusing. But all it basically is 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 you, you're attracting people to fill in a form. Um, either on your website or or uh, through click funnels or Kartra or something like that, and you get the you get the details. you get the details um, through through that sort of system. It's quite an easy easy uh, way of working, you know. So we better tell people then a little bit about that. So for those who don't know, so we have another arm to what we do called Business Success Academy BSA. So Darren and Rianne are members of Rinner Hive, where we teach all these skill sets. Yeah. Um, and the difference is, you know, a lot of marketing that I see photographers do, it's what I call passive marketing. So it's marketing where you're relying on someone else to trigger the need that I have a requirement for newborn photography. Yeah. Um, while active, proactive marketing is where you take control of your marketing. Um, where you design marketing funnels and systems to bring people into your world, that you are the trigger for those people to be even and be aware yeah. that they have a requirement for your need and you bring them into your world. So, so Darren by, and Rianne, by taking control of your marketing that way, right, and being more proactive, what's, in global terms, what has it meant to the business? You don't have to give us actual numbers, but... You know, what has it actually meant to the business? We we've been our average sales um has trebled since pre pre-pandemic. Um and it's just looking at getting better and better. And um, we've this um we've had a shorter year this year, obviously, because of uh, the uh, pandemic. But just today, with our sales that we've done today. We have hit the highest ever yearly turnover since for 13 years. So and that's in that's done. That was done in well since since April. Since isn't it? April. So, so it's not right. a full year. So anyway. It's not even a full year. May, right, August, September, October, September, September. So in eight months, you've done more sales than any previous year. Yes. More sales, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's thanks to learning a lot with BSA. Yeah. And it's not about just um, average sale, like you've talked about. So you've increased your pricing, but you've also increased the quantity of sessions, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're now in control of your calendar and your diary as to how busy you, you will be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, we're busy at the moment working on next year's, uh, next year's plans. Um, we've already got bookings in the diary up until, was it June next June. year? Yeah. So... We uh, touch wood that just keeps going the same way, you know. Yes, yeah. You you are and both an inspiration to us all. So tell us this. I know in the chat we've put a link to your website, right? So Darren, yes. just tell us what that link tells us when we click on the link. So guys, in the chat, if you scroll to the top, you'll see the link to Darren and Rianne's website, and 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 you guys are speaking at the societies yes. in London in March. Talk yeah, to us yeah, how exciting yeah. is that? Really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, we are speaking on the Thursday um, in the societies. Um, it's about... Uh, what? It's, a, it's the uh, business of newborn photography. Yeah. And it's uh, it's not so much you're posing, how you pose babies and, and that. It's, it's more, more the about business side, like, so you can put it yeah. to any genre, really. It's to tell you about profit first, um it's you know it's all about the business, the business side, side of running a photography studio really because we failed many times yeah. at the very beginning 13 years ago um because there's a lot I, more to yeah. just yeah. i wish i knew now 13 years ago yeah you know and and i think if uh, if we had this 13 years ago 
we we would have made so many mistakes, <laughs> you know, because we were tracing clients, tracing everything. Yeah, we know? were we were having numbers and numbers and numbers through our door, thinking, oh, this is fantastic. We got lots of people, yeah. but they were only they they weren't spending. Yeah. They were like a couple <laughs> of you know yeah. this and that and. And that's the thing. We were tracing numbers of, of clients. Qu- and yeah, quantity one, over quality. One year, we photographed 270 newborns. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and we still didn't make... As enough, much as what as we've made we, this year. As much as we're making now. Baron, that's a lot of peeing and pooping and dribbling. <laughs> that's all I can say. It is a bit, you know. It's not a week if Rian doesn't get Peter Pooed on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, guys, you know, if you can catch up with Darren and Rian, certainly do. Um, there's the link. I post the link again in case it wasn't there. Some people were saying they couldn't see it when they scrolled to the top. And um, if you are interested in joining Business Success Academy and joining Darren and Rianne and the hundreds of photographers from around the world who are members of BSA, because there's a lot of community there too, guys, right? Isn't it? We share. Oh, fantastic ideas. community. We've had um, mentor sessions with um, people who live in America. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's so I mean, open. Thing, Everyone's willing to share. Yeah. And um, that's the thing. There's, there's no, no secrets, no competition between mm. everyone. Everyone wants everyone to succeed and when we were having trouble in the past um sort of getting past the point of increasing our price list we had a message from kayla and uh, jonathan and they live they, they live in in the states they arranged to do a zoom view a zoom talk to us and sort of got our confidence after increase our prices which they helped us tremendously we also then a couple of weeks ago, um, we had another another uh, Zoom call from Shay. She she uh, was great helping us yeah. sort of uh, We've further had... again get get better in our yeah. um, sales. And in return, we've tried we've uh, been helping her with her profit first. You know, yeah. So it's a, it's a marvelous community. It is. It's a fantastic community. Even a couple of weeks, uh, well, a couple of months ago, I had quite an awkward client. Um, told it all about the pricing and everything like that but you know people sometimes don't listen to you um but you know Dwayne was literally on the other side of the zoom and he was like right okay how can I help you and you know help me sort it all out really so yeah it's a fantastic community and that alone is worth its weight in gold yeah worth every penny and um, and Dwayne's in California so that's the yeah. other beauty isn't it it's the international view that we have because we've got members in France and Belgium and Germany and um, Canada and England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, um, US. And, yeah, they're all you know, over, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. 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 And, 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 and the, but the challenges we all have in business are very similar, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell me before we go, you guys are going to Imaging USA, right? In January this year. Yeah. Washington. <laughs> so, yeah. Talk to me about that because you know it's rare that we see a, a UK based photographer, you know, coming to Imaging USA in, in the US. So are, are you looking forward to it? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've wanted to go to Imaging for years. You know, I've, I've always uh, I've always wanted to go to Abbott for the last several years, but but never been able to sort of afford it. But uh, we had our tax bill the other day, paid the tax bill. We've had, we've got money left over. So we were like, right, so, okay, we go in there and stay there. We go to uh, Imogen. <laughs> so the money was there. We didn't have to worry about it because obviously the tax bill wasn't as much as what we thought because we bought so much equipment the last year. Um, so we had some rebates and then obviously we had nothing to go yeah. to Imogen. So yeah, fantastic. <laughs> There we are. Listen, Darren, Rianne, thank you so much for joining us on this month's 3XM Photography Think Tank webinar. You're an inspiration to us all. We love you in BSA as well. <laughs> you know, and the beauty I love about BSA is people, as much as we get from others, we give as well. And you guys are definitely yes, givers yeah. within BSA. So, yeah. and thank you so much for your business with 3XM. You know, you're one of our, our top UK based clients. So we really appreciate your business. <laughs> But more so, we appreciate your friendship, you know, because um, we'll, uh, we'll like to be your top UK uh, client next year. 
there's great competition going on. There's great competition. Going on. <laughs> I love a bit of competition between clients as to who can get to number one. <laughs> All right. Stay safe, stay healthy. Yeah, thank have you very much for having us. Have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Oh, and you yeah. have a really successful new year. And we'll see you in London or we'll see you at Imaging. So stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll see you then. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.